After I released the review of the P2S, I had a few comments that came up discussing that this machine actually has worse VFAs than the previous generation. And although I briefly mentioned VFAs in my video and how they were tied to the belt tube spacing, and I showed an example of my print results, I didn't actually do an apples to apples comparison between the X1C and the P2S. And that's really the only way we're gonna be able to know for sure if the VFAs are worse. So we're gonna test the same material, same print settings, same dryness, uh, not just the P2S or the X1C, but also my H2D and my GD Plus 4 to get that apples to apples. So are VFAs the same? Are they worse or could they be better on the new P2S? Let's find out. So stick around. VFA means very fine artifacts, but they're not the kind of artifacts you dig up and become filthy rich and buy a yacht. Instead, we're talking about these type of artifacts, which come from a combination of the printer structure, the mass of the moving parts of the machine, and also belt tube spacing, the belt type, also the pulleys, and to some extent, the slicer and the firmware as well, and then the sensors that are being used. The VFAs are basically a result of the transmission of vibration from the printer itself into the final part. And even though we can't really feel these vibrations, if we run our finger along the surface, we can still see them on shiny surfaces and darker surfaces. These VFAs aren't really a problem for fitting parts together. They're really more of an aesthetic issue. Now, Chidi was one of the first manufacturers to release a printer using the finer belt tube spacing, and that was on the Plus 4 and on their new Q2 as well. They have that finer spacing. And then Bamboo also upgraded the belts on their H2 series. The X1 here and the P2S both have the original belt tube spacing of two millimeters. And even though the P2S is full of upgrades, the carbon fiber rods have been replaced with steel. That means more moving mass and the carbon fiber can also help absorb vibrations. And maybe that might be why it's a bit worse on the P2S than the previous generation. Now that alone does not mean more VFAs because it can be compensated for. For example, on my plus four, it also has steel rods on the X axis and it produces prints with very fine VFAs. They're actually so fine that it's hard to see them. So I think to be sure what we really need to do is test it out. So I have some dried shiny dark blue PET G and I've created this simple model in Fusion with various levels of sharp corners and rounded corners as well. And it's a pretty big model. So we have a good size example of what we're gonna be getting when we're done. There is a VFA calibration test, but I wanted to do it this way so that we can get a large shadow free surface to have a look at and compare. So what I'll do first is run two pieces on the P2S, keeping in mind that I just updated the firmware and I have not recalibrated anything. I wanted to do this to see if there's any difference between pre-calibration and post-calibration. The test on the left will be run at the standard speed and the one on the right slows down as it gets towards the top moving from 150 millimeters per second at the bottom on the outside to 40 millimeters per second at the top. I also have three walls on this and 20% infill. I calibrate it for both motor noise cancellation and also for vibration compensation on the P2S and then I re-ran the exact same parts again. I also ran the parts on my X1C and on my H2D and then on my GD Plus 4. And I did not do a good job of calibrating on the plus four since I'm getting lazy having the eddy current calibration on my new printers here, but that should not affect the results too much when it comes to VFAs. So let's take a look at the results. So we have the P2S pre-calibration and P2S post-calibration. And this is going from a fast speed to a slow speed near the top. So we start at 150 and at 40, we finished here at the top. And they actually look kind of similar, but I will say they don't feel similar. This one feels smooth. And this one I can actually feel down at the bottom here. You can barely see them, but you, I can actually feel a little bit of these undulations, which is not normal. If you upgrade the firmware, you definitely need to recalibrate for the resonance or for vibration. It's super smooth. You can hear it with my fingernail, but it's super smooth here on both of these. As we have the rounded corners, it gets a little bit better. And again, the larger rounded corner gets a little bit better again. And what's interesting here is that these are a little bit shiny, so it does show up a bit more, but these are slowed down. So you'd think that it would be better, but it's, it's not. So they're not optimized for that printer. 
So then we have pre versus post calibration for the P2S again, pre and post. There's that sharp corner and you can barely, barely see some vibration. This actually to me looks more like ringing. You can also see that it is parallel to this corner as well. So this section here, and it kind of stops partway through on both of these pre and post. Again, it looks like the pre is a little bit further along, a little bit more pronounced. I can't feel it. And the post looks a little bit better. And this side is quite good. Again, post calibration looks ever so slightly better here. Again, here it's just barely, barely better. So these are, I would say, quite good, but you can definitely see some BFAs in there, especially at slower speeds. So we can compare that against the X1C. Now what I will do is just compare post calibration for the P2S against the X1C. The standard speed for both of them. Now the X1C, you can see, does not have nearly as consistent of a print as the P2S. So this P2S is much smoother. My X1C is quite old and definitely used and abused. So that could play into it a little bit, but uh, I'll take a look into that. We're really focused on VFA. So I would say this is far, far cleaner, but this one here has less VFAs at the standard speed. Oh, I can't believe how much of a difference there is. This is so much smoother. To me, this does not look like it's caused by the belt as much as it's caused by the acceleration from this very sharp corner here. X1C on the left, P2S on the right, and these are both slowed down. So again, same thing, much, much rougher, very extremely smooth. But you can see we have VFAs on both of them. They look a little bit different from each other. And I would say this one has slightly more than this one does. To me, these VFAs look like they're slightly more vertical as well, but we do have a little bit of that ringing going on from the corner in addition to that. Here we have some of that ringing ghosting from around the corner, but we also have the vertical lines that are caused by that belt. The H2D and P2S, both standard speed. It's not the high flow pet G, so it does like to ooze a little bit. On occasion, you'll get a little tiny blob. You can also see this is a little bit shinier too. So we're getting Definitely a little bit more visible on this one here. Print quality on both is extremely smooth. They both feel really good. Again, a little bit more on this one, on the P2S, but not much. And again, just a little bit more on the P2S. Here is the slow version or slowing version. Let's see, it's a little hard to tell, but it definitely looks like we have more on this one here. On that side, more again on the P2S, but both are quite good. Again, very smooth. And this side here, again, more on the P2S. Very similar on both. You can see a little bit of a cooling issue up at the top on the H. 2D. But overall, the H2D does have a little bit less vibration than the P2S, even though it has quite a large and massive a double extruder, double um, hot end head. Like I said, I did not calibrate this filament and it was over extruding a little bit, but it is still quite smooth. You can see I ended up getting a big blob on the top. So this is the plus four and you can see there the VFAs are, are so fine that really you can barely even see them. On this one here, you could just see them. Hopefully you can see it on camera down at the bottom there. 
You see a little bit of ringing around this corner here. Cooling issue there and probably a little bit of over extrusion. But these are quite good, even though I had the extrusion issue there with just not calibrating the slower version. There's a little section there where you can see a little bit of the VFAs at the top. Some visible, but very, very fine. So definitely that belt tooth spacing seems to help quite a bit. So hopefully you can see for yourself what the results look like and what you can expect with shiny materials on each of these printers. And I'm actually surprised the H2D is able to compensate so well for it considering that the mass of the head is so much more than the other printers. Now personally, I don't think any of these VFAs are terrible. The Chidi Plus 4 is one of the best along with the H2D. Now I don't have an H2S, so that one could even be better because it only has the single hot end, less mass on that head. The shinier the material and the darker it is, the more it tends to show those VFAs as well. Now, if you like using PETG like I do and VFAs are a problem, I have been messing around with using paint on fuzzy skin, which gives a lot more control than just the original contour or hole. And I'd add an extremely fine fuzz and that also cuts down on the sheen, but at a cost of additional print time. With the P2S being so new, I'd also imagine like their previous printers that with firmware updates, it can also be improved beyond what we're seeing here, but I guess only time will tell with that one. So even though the print quality is very good on the P2S, it produces super smooth parts, our focus is on VFAs. So for VFAs, it does produce slightly more than the other printers that I tested here. That's probably since the belt two spacing and general configuration of the motion system is the same as the P1 and X1. And that means the most likely cause is the steel rods, their extra mass, as well as how steel transmits vibration better than carbon fiber. I know that some people don't like carbon fiber because of the dust, so it might have been a good decision to change it. Hopefully this answered your question about VFAs for the PS2 so you know what to expect. And I make these videos showing the results so that you can decide for yourself if this is the right machine for you. So if you're asking me specifically, do I still recommend this machine knowing that the VFAs are a little bit more pronounced, the answer is still, of course, yes. And that really is because using the stock print speeds, it does show less VFAs. They're barely visible at that point. And then the print results overall are excellent. So there might be more VFAs, but overall print quality is very good. And for me, at least, print quality is the most important. If you like what I'm doing here and you're in the market for a printer, I have a very short list below of my top recommended printers. And thank you again to all my patrons for helping to make this channel possible. Thank you for watching, take care, and hope to see you on the next one. Firmware update just came through and I ran this one prior to the firmware update and I ran this one after the firmware update after another calibration as well. Now, the reason I was doing this was because this has a light 0.1.1 fuzzy skin. I painted it on this surface, this surface as well. And then this one I left and this one, this side I left as well. But I noticed something too. So this section and this side are run at regular speed. The fuzzy skin here causes it to slow down quite a bit. But if you look, this quality seems to be quite a bit better. We're not getting these kind of larger sections of vibration traveling through. So all I'm saying is that it might be possible that a firmware update can correct some of these issues and that they're beginning to go through that process. And now we're getting very, very fine segments, very similar in a way to what I'd get on the plus four. And I should apologize for my terrible calibration job on that plus four. Both of these are quite good. I just, this one looks to me a little bit better.